We have developmental neurotoxicity, mm -hmm. right, uh, for which no studies have been done whatsoever. Uh, federal regulations do not mandate a developmental neurotoxicity test, or a DNT, as it's called, unless there is a compelling reason for one. I don't understand the reasoning that would lead to a conclusion that methyl iodide does not require a DNT. Uh, it's neurotoxic, certainly. It's developmentally toxic, certainly. And let's add the third thing in. It's an endocrine disruptor. I mean, there's every, everybody's data, Arista's data, it disrupts thyroid function. I, I think you know about endocrine disruption and development and environmental concerns for the human population. But you know, there's a special relationship between thyroid function during development and development of the brain. If you're severely hypothyroid, you wind up with mental retardation, that's cretinism, right? But we now know that that's not an all or none phenomenon. It's not like severe hypothyroid, cretinism, normal thyroid, you're okay, right? So it, there's a spectrum. And there's a lot of studies now, it's a hot issue in developmental neurotox, that cryptic hypothyroidism, where there's no symptoms, all right, but it's still not quite normal, is sufficient to cause damage that culminates in lowered IQ, affective disorders, learning disorders, and the like. Um, so so if, you, if you were to go up to the thousands of scientists who study developmental neurotoxicity and tell them, I've got a new compound, right, that I want to expose people to. It's neurotoxic. It's developmentally toxic, and it's an endocrine disruptor. Do you think that we should do a developmental neurotoxicity study? I, I'll give you really long odds, better than the odds for Duke to win the basketball champion, uh, uh, that every one of those scientists would tell you this compound is going to be a developmental neurotoxicant, and they would be right. Mm -hmm. And no data on it. So how do, you set, how do you mitigate? How do you set a calculation? So, and finally, I also want to express a personal opinion, and that's separate from the scientific things I've said. I'm not an environmental activist, and I've never before participated in a governmental review of pesticide safety. I'm not in blanket opposition to the use of pesticides. But methyl iodide alarms me. And it does so for a specific reason, that everything that I see recapitulates the history of the organophosphate insecticides. The organophosphates came into use in the 1960s to replace the persistent organochlorines like PDT because of environmental concerns. They were originally considered safe. They could be mitigated safely. And because the symptoms of poisoning were unmistakable and could be monitored easily by measuring blood levels of an enzyme, cholinesterase, everyone was very comfortable about using them. Beginning in the 1980s, about 20 years later, it started to become evident that the immature organism, the fetus and the newborn, was far more sensitive to organophosphates with a difference in the threshold for lethality of a factor of 10 to 100. Sound familiar? OK. Um, in the subsequent decade, it was shown that this difference did not reflect cholinesterase inhibition, the mechanism that everyone was supposing was responsible for the toxicity of these compounds. And in fact, my own research group was involved in showing that the developing brain got screwed up by levels of exposure 100 to 1,000 fold lower than what anyone thought based on what we knew about organophosphate insecticides. Based almost entirely on laboratory studies, not human epidemiology or poisoning incidents, this led the US EPA to ban the use of some of the most common organophosphates from use in the home starting in 2000, 40 years later. But the damage had already been done, especially because human exposure to organophosphates was virtually ubiquitous. They represented more than half of the insecticide use in the world. A number of research groups then began examining populations with higher than average exposures. Inner city tenement dwellers in New York, where I grew up, agricultural workers and their families in California, and children living in agricultural communities, also largely in California. What they found was exactly what was predicted from the laboratory work. Impaired IQ directly related to the measured organophosphate exposure of the mother during pregnancy. Increased rates of depression and suicide correlated with organophosphate use by farmers. And finally, in a report from just a few weeks ago, a 60% increase in the risk of ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, from exposure of the general population to organophosphate, not the high exposure group. That's everybody, OK? So the information about organophosphates was actually there much earlier. Neurotoxic, developmentally toxic, development, uh, developmentally neurotoxic, and yet 
we failed to protect the general public from the consequence of their household use up until 2000, and we continue to use them in agriculture. I think we're all aware that there is an unprecedented rise in the incidence of neurodevelopmental disorders, including learning disabilities, conduct disorders, autism spectrum disorders, and ADHD. It is increasingly clear to many scientists and other people in the regulatory sphere that exposures to neurotoxic chemicals in our environment contribute in a major way to this silent pandemic, which costs us hundreds of billions of dollars each year and which compromises the quality of life of millions of children. The US EPA estimates that one of every four production chemicals is likely to be neurotoxic, most of which never undergo testing for that effect, let alone for developmental neurotoxicity. So when we come across a compound that is known to be neurotoxic, as well as developmentally toxic and endocrine disrupting, it would seem prudent to err on the side of caution demanding that the appropriate scientific testing be done in animals instead of going ahead and putting it into use, in which case the test animals will be the children of the state of California. For a volatile agent like methyl iodide, there is no blowout preventer that will protect workers or people living in adjacent communities from the consequences of an accident, a shift in the wind, misapplication, or even simply repeated standard applications with inappropriate mitigation factors that don't mitigate anything. I do not want to see the story of organophosphates repeated with methyl iodide, where 20 or 30 years from now, we'll see a further deterioration and even higher incidences of neurodevelopmental disorders. I would not want you to be in the situation where you say to yourself, I could have prevented that. Prevent it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for traveling out here. May I ask you uh, what you may have heard in the prior testimony that stuck out in your mind is egregious and worthy of correction as we Well, I noticed that the whole here. idea of, of developmental neurotoxicity <clears throat> never came up. And um, there, there's a flaw in logic here. If developmental toxicity is the most sensitive endpoint, if neurotoxicity is the co most commonly observed phenomenon from human poisonings and is supported by laboratory studies, if the US EPA failed to ask for a DNT, for a developmental neurotoxicity test, why should we propagate that error? And uh, it, it seems specious to me to even begin to try to calculate something that will mitigate and make something safe when you have no idea where the no adverse effect level is, except the certainty that it's much lower than anything that we've already looked at. Thank you very much. <laughs>